deep in the night Your heart fills with dread Probably a murderer who wants you dead It could be a ghost, a demon or worse Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse It's hopeless, you're doomed You'd call a priest if you could You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? And welcome to another edition of Freaky Friday. It's the first Friday in February. Freaky Friday, that's five Fs in a row. Fah, 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 fah. And some might say it's a freaky February because it's a leap year. That's true. It seems like it was recently a leap year, but that's because the last four years have blurred out themselves <laughs> in my brain. I was like, yeah. it was just a leap year. Yeah, it was just a leap year. And now We've it's one lost- again at the past four years so it looks like it just happened two years in a row <laughs> i did notice it's a leap of february uh but also it's a docuary which i'm excited about today yeah. if you're listening before 2 p.m central february 2nd you can join us over on patreon we're doing every friday in february where we talk about a documentary and today we're talking about american factory it's the four most recent academy award winners starting so that'll help us remember the last four years <laughs> yeah, we're like oh like, that's right that's what's right. ironic is the only one i've seen was the one from last year so i really <laughs> do think i was just like out blacked out yeah no yeah. i have no concept of anything yeah that you happened. had a whole ass kid in that time too yeah. since the last yeah, leap I year <laughs> i mean crap. that's uh i see him every day so that's yeah. a reminder that something did happen time has during passed. those years but time has passed But also, leap years are so weird. It's like, well, we don't really know what time is, and we got to make something up. So here, uh, every four years, we're just going to add an extra month on to this day. So then, what if you're born on the 29th? What do Uh, you do? Shout out. Shout out to the leap year babies. I've known people with leap year birthdays that have like... They'll just count, you know, like, oh, it's really my fifth birthday, but, you know, you're really 20 or whatever. So do they go 28th or 1st? I think you deserve both. I think you get two parties. Oh, you get two birthdays. <laughs> I would fun. say, yeah, 28th is early, but the first is late. But then you realize it's all made up labels. Yeah. It's fake labels. Why is October the 10th month that oct means eight? It's because like 150 years ago, they were like, oh, we fucked up. We got to just just stick an extra one on. It's fine. I, I love I don't will get it. all the time ask us or she'll say. Well, I have the first birthday of the family and I'm like, and Tommy goes, it's all a circle. So it doesn't yeah. really. And she was <laughs> like, true. what? And I'm, I'm like, well, January technically is the start of the year. So technically I have the first birthday, yeah, but mama has the first birthday. By the time you get to December, it seems like you have the first one because all of ours are about to come after yours. But yeah, then I uh, just blew her mind with the string theory. Just kidding. <laughs> we haven't gotten quite there yet. That'll be next year, probably. I'm going to wait till she's seven to introduce that. You're like, you see this plate, kid? Time's a flat circle. She's like, <laughs> Can I just have some more chicken nuggets? <laughs> like, <laughs> you got to learn sometime, though, and dinner time's the best time to uh, realize that time's all made up and it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, if you have a leap year birthday, one, I think that's – you get – a 48 hour birthday party yes. because we don't know when your birthday is, but also I feel like that's a flex and a fun fact that you can have about yourself mm-hmm. and uh, it makes you probably lucky in some way. It makes you special in my eyes. I do. I think so. You just so happen to get born on a fake day, but you know what? <laughs> you're a real person. Your birthday is fake, yeah. but you're real in my heart. Don't let anybody tell you you don't exist because you're born on a day <laughs> That, or they're like, oh, there you are every four years. They're, and you're like, I've been here. And they're like, I don't see you unless it's the 29th of February that happens once every four years. Sorry, we don't recognize you. But we here at Sinisterhood do recognize you. And we're sending you love. This uh, yeah. It's your year. It's your year, baby. It it's comes your once year. every four years. Last one was like. We were kind of getting right into the about to trip and fall and not like shut the stock market down and stuff. February leap year of 2020. So may this be a, a, a better leap year for you. May it be. Also, I believe the Chinese New Year is this month, February 10th, if I'm not Excellent. mistaken. And it is the year of the dragon. Love so to hear it. 
Ella's real excited. <laughs> she should you be. I love she how loves much she loves dragons. dragons. Yes. Yeah. And uh, go back and listen to our dragon episode to hear how oh, they're actually man. dinosaurs. So, and they're real and they're trying to hide it from us. You know what? Simon likes to play a game where he says, what sound does an animal make? And then um, the other night he was doing one. I was like, lion, tiger. Cause he was just going, Rah! Oh, yeah, that's and a then lot. he said dragon. And I went, that is an animal, buddy. <laughs> Good Don't job, you my let son. anybody tell you it's not. It's Good a real job. animal that deserves to be played in this game. Yes. He uh we're we're here for the, the dragon not being left behind. <laughs> <laughs> dragon that dragon. Well, t- the freakiest of Fridays, happy to you all that we start this month. F F F F F F F F F Quad. Yes. Coming in hot. I am Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get freaky. This first one is from Sabrina, and it is called That Time I Was Institutionalized with a Kidnapper. Hello, ladies. I absolutely adore you and your show. The names of people have been changed in this story. When I was a kid growing up in the 1980s, I was diagnosed with ADHD. It wasn't very well understood back then. And aside from being put on Ritalin, I was sent to a psychiatrist. At the time, I had a lot of problems. At the age of 12, I was struggling socially in school, as I was a small child, and picked on a lot. I was also hyper-focused on Star Trek and Edgar Allan Poe. I even wrote very dark poetry, which made my mother fear I was suicidal. So, thinking I was losing touch with reality, and thinking of death... In 1987, my mother had me institutionalized. We lived in Billings, Montana at the time, and I was sent to a home for emotionally disturbed youth called Rivendell. Mind you, I had not even heard of the Lord of the Rings at the time, so I had no idea where the name of this place was taken from. It was not a great environment. The rules were incredibly strict. Kids were separated into colored teams, red, blue, and yellow, who were forbidden to interact with each other. I was on the red team. So was Ray. Ray was someone I had been vaguely aware of before I was sent to Rivendell. He was the ex-boyfriend of my oldest sister's best friend, Jenny. Why were they exes? Well, apparently in 1986, they had a fight and Jenny had come to my house to spend the night with my sister to talk about it. It was the night when my parents were out of town and my older sisters, Kirsten and Jan, were left in charge. Late that night, as I was in bed, I heard a commotion and shouting from inside the house. I was so scared I hid under the covers for what seemed like forever. I came out when I saw the flashing lights of police cars outside. It turned out that Ray had broken into our house and kidnapped Jenny. My sister had tried to stop him, but he was a pretty big guy and enraged, so he managed to get Jenny out of the house and drove away with her. The cops had stopped him arrested him, and brought Jenny back to the house. Ray had been found mentally incompetent and sent to Rivendell until he turned 18. He would be then transferred to an adult facility after that. Ray was on my team. The staff was completely unaware of our shared history, and because he had never seen me, Ray didn't know who I was or who my sister was. When on the proper antipsychotic meds, Ray was kind of a chill guy, and he introduced me to Pink Floyd. I was just a kid at the time, and he was an older guy who seemed to just be looking for a friend. It was still really weird, because I knew why he was there and what he had done, and it was hard to reconcile the person I was getting to know and the person who had terrified me when I was younger. Ray eventually aged out, and I was eventually released and sent to the Billings Boys and Girls Ranch, The co-ed class was completely full, so they sent me to the all-girls class. You see, at the time, I was presenting as a boy. I'm trans, which is part of my problem not fitting in back then, when we didn't really have the language or support for folks like me. I was also a baby bat, the term for budding goths, which was why I had been writing such dark poetry. I am now very proudly out and happy and taking joy in my own dark aesthetic, Thank you for considering my story. Love to both of you. Wow. That is, I mean, for you, Sabrina, you're just, you see somebody and know what they did, but Mm -hmm. they have 
they're just operating of like, this is just some new kid in the facility. Isn't that an interesting point of view to have knowledge of someone that somebody, they have no idea, you know, Mm -mm. but you know, and you're looking at them through a completely different light. It's a, it's, I, I think perhaps an advantage in this situation because right. you know what you're what you're getting into and i am very glad that um you are now very happy and living the life that you were meant to live the entire time i i hate these schools yeah I just they are so uh so problematic and dangerous and abusive and it's often a pray the gay away or beat the gay out of you type mm-hmm. of environment. Um, I hope, Sabrina, that your time was not as terrible as others I've heard about. I can't even bring myself to watch that new Netflix series, oh, yeah. Hell the- Camp, mm-hmm. I think, is because it's just um, the people that need the help the most, these teens and young kids that are, I mean, clearly like, you're struggling with things because you you're trans and you don't know how to express mm-hmm. that because you don't have the language and your mom doesn't know what to do. So they just ship you off dot, dot, dot. So yeah. um, let's, I think we're, unfortunately it's still done, but I, mm-hmm. I hope we're trending towards things like this are dealt with in a more uh, respectful and healthy way before something like this is considered. Yeah, where you're, you know, you're not, it's not like you kidnapped anyone, but you end up in the same facility of someone that Mm -hmm. kidnapped someone for, you know, being depressed or having ADHD symptoms or having gender dysphoria, you know, things like that to be like, you you both belong in the same place. You're like, well, I don't think we do. One of us kidnapped a person yeah, and the other one did not. But you're right. I think as we know better, we do better. And as more, you know, studies, research, all that comes out about this is the best way to treat the children who are mm-hmm. going through this or having these symptoms and it's not always, you know, straight up, uh, send them straight to an institution right away. Uh, and then the institutions that do exist are hopefully more highly regulated and, uh, more for a rehabilitation and learning and not like strict rule prison type mm. environment, you know, but you made it. You made it, Sabrina. You did. You've, you went from a baby bat to a full grown, beautiful <laughs> bat. <laughs> the bat you I were meant to be. I never heard that turn, but I love, it. I love it. I also think it's worth noting that uh, maybe do some due diligence and see who you're rooming people with because yeah. what if he had known? who Sabrina was and then and the staff didn't know that. I mean, again, another problem like that places like that um have overlooked. Yeah. Just don't really do the digging that maybe needs to be done. Yeah, being like, oh you guys are from the same city. Hmm, you're familiar with this person's name? Uh, cause he might not be familiar and who knows what if he would have found out, got upset, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like he he was being managed at least with his well, medication. Just everybody got the help that they need. As always, yeah. Sinister Hood will be right back. Well, when you've got kiddos, you're always looking for clothes that not only are cute and comfortable and unique, but also that don't break the bank. And Caden Lane fits the bill. It takes all the boxes for these. They don't, don't just have clothes either. They got blankies. They've got swimsuits. They've got toys, other fun stuff. We just recently ordered Simon a blanket with trucks all over it because Aww. you know he loves his cars and trucks and it says his name on it. It says Simon all over it and he loves it. He sleeps with it every night. And he loves to play burrito, which is a game where he just lays on a blanket and we roll him up like a burrito and then we carry him around the house and pretend (laughs) different people pretend to eat him. Yeah, that's what we play. It's called burrito. It's totally normal. And now his favorite burrito blanket is his Caden Lane blanket. (laughs) Made possible by that Caden Lane blanket. Well, Caden Lane was started in 2005 by a single mom who wanted to create better and cuter clothes, accessories, and keepsakes for her own children and for those special moments you were remember forever. Caden Lane makes caregivers' lives easier. 
that shows up in their color me pajamas that help make bedtime fun and enjoyable or hiding extra zips and snaps and outfits to make it easier to get little ones dressed. They have over 70,000 five-star reviews and millions of customers for a reason. Caden Lane's new swim collection is here for worry-free fun in the sun. Keep your little one's sensitive skin safe with their UPF 50 plus sun protection swimwear. And best of all, they also have premium quality matching swimsuits for the entire family. This, uh, I, I never know. I'm like, Oh, if I got to buy a gift for somebody with a kid, what if they have sensitive skin or what if it's going to irritate them or it's going to fall apart? But with Caden Lane, you know, it's high quality. It's skin safe and it's cute as hell. So I can pick anything. I love these swimsuits that have the built-in sunscreen protection because it is such a beating to put sunscreen on your kids when you're already, (laughs) they're already wet or you're trying, it's just, if you know, you know, nobody wants to do that. And also if you're the type of family that loves to wear matching outfits, they've got you covered. Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to CadenLane.com slash creepy and use code creepy for 20% off your order. Once again, that's C-A-D-E-N-L-A-N-E dot com backslash creepy for 20% off and make sure you use our promo code creepy so they know we sent you. Well, this next one is from Kim and it is called, I almost became a victim of a mass shooting. Hello, ladies. I am a recent listener, but I love the show. I decided to share my story of being in the area where a possible mass shooting could have taken place. In 2017, I was at the Phoenix Comic Con, now known as Phoenix Fan Fusion, in Phoenix, Arizona. I work with a volunteer group that puts on panels during the convention. I had two back-to-back panels in the main building. Unknown to me and everyone in our last panel... It was a Disney sing-along panel, if you're curious. On the same floor, just a hallway away, a man who had guns and knives on him was being arrested. I didn't know anything had happened until after our panel was over, and I walked outside to meet my husband, who was having a smoke. When I looked at Facebook to see all the reports of a gunman being arrested at the con just 15 minutes ago, I kept looking at the information and back at the building we were outside of. I was confused about how there was nothing to signal that all of us were in danger. I saw people walking around like normal and didn't see any increased security or police presence. I walked down the stairs and about a hundred yards from where the arrest happened to get outside. I saw nothing to alert me that anything had gone wrong. Turns out this man was there to kill one of the guests. He tried to stab him 15 years earlier, but the person survived. This man was there to finish the job and also kill as many cops as possible. Of course, he left out the number of citizens who would have also been hurt. This con has a lot of families who come together dressed up in their matching cosplays. Luckily, no one was hurt because someone who knew the gunman had made a call to the local police and they were able to find and arrest him before anything could happen. This was on the first day of a four-day con. Also, what is just as scary is there wasn't much of a security check. You would walk right into the convention center, and the tables for any prop weapons to be checked were off to the side, where people would have to choose to go have it checked. Nothing was mandatory. Due to this incident, the convention center and security were not prepared, and they ended up with one or two areas you were allowed in, which caused people to wait hours to get in standing in 115-degree Phoenix weather in June. I had friends miss meet and greets or nearly pass out. I was reminded of this event because in 2022, the guest the perpetrator had been targeting passed away from suicide. It was Jason David Frank, who had been in the Power Rangers. Hearing of his passing brought this memory back to me. I still go to the con and do panels with my group, only because they got better about security and I don't feel completely unsafe. But I still always remember how I almost could have been a victim of a mass shooting had no one stopped him. The big takeaway is please, if you hear of anyone threatening violence of any kind, please report them to authorities. You never know whose life you may be saving in the process. That's so true because this person, it was very premeditated. They said in this article link that was included 
I, I put these two articles Thank you. here. Mm-hmm. That it said he put a reminder, the assailant put a reminder, yeah. killed JDF in his phone, a reminder yeah. for that day. So he had planned. Jason David Frank was my favorite Power Ranger. I was absolutely devastated when he died by suicide. Tragic he, story. He was uh, a, a friend of mine from back in Chicago had, you know, sent me a, like he worked at a place where Jason David Frank had come in and told them, hey, you know, my friend really loves you. And he made like what would now be like a cameo for me it was like so nice like hey heather they tell me that you really love my work thank you so much like you don't have to do that for zero dollars you know it was just being friendly so that was one of those Mm -hmm. like oh my childhood idol you know was it was just as nice as everybody would hope so he was also a martial arts expert so i mean this guy had a lot of weaponry and not a grip on reality it sounds like what's uh, scary is uh if you look at the article of the perpetrator walking in he's in full tactical gear Mm -hmm. with bullets and stuff but because it's a comic con and everyone's dressed up you may just think oh he's just in costume he's cosplaying as someone not having to check the weapons is wild i i i hope that that is drastically changed maybe maybe even like not allowing fake weapons to be brought in because Mm -hmm. i mean it's always better to be safe than sorry, but I wasn't yeah. super familiar with Jason David Frank's story. And I, so I looked that up and that is also super, super tragic. He and mm-hmm. his wife had been having some problems after her daughter passed away and he found her, the daughter, but they had reconciled. They were kind of on this um, weekend getaway at this hotel And they'd had like a really good talk in his room. I think they had been drinking and partying. And she said she went down just to get some snacks from the lobby. It was gone maybe 10 minutes. And when she came back up, he wasn't answering the door. And then security broke in. So it's it's so sad that you even she said, I knew he had been struggling with mental health problems, mm-hmm. but I had no idea that he was having suicidal thoughts. So it's just a reminder to always check in with the people that you love and might be concerned about. Yeah, it's so it's always heartbreaking when it's somebody that's uh, kind of has that public persona of like happy, friendly, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like Stephen, the boss, the Twitch uh with, oh yeah you know very well Ellen. known as, yeah uh, yeah and like yeah. jason david frank was a, a big face at conventions fan cons across the country you know you know where you pay to do a meet and greet or you know take a photo or whatever and by all accounts was like always the kindest to fans and super and it's one of those where like you never know if somebody who's so friendly mm-hmm. might actually be really hurting but yeah conferences not just fan cons but if i mean i've been to a million legal conferences or you know td ameritrade when i was a financial person and it was kind of loose as far as like you mm-hmm. it's like oh you have to have a badge for entry but really you know there's it's a kind of a hotel lobby or some yeah. of these convention centers where there are doors to the outside and when you're in that conference room you know kind of like when they were in there for the disney sing-along you know and kim is like in this conference room especially 2017 where as i think each year we have upped our security but there's no uh windows to the outside you know it almost mm-hmm. you're like windowless time stops it's like being in a casino you don't even know what's going on outside mm-hmm. so uh it's i'm um, hopefully like you said they have more security and just uh, something to check in those weapons or make sure they're like obviously fake weapons because mm-hmm. that is what eerie. what um color power ranger was he he was the Green Ranger for a while until he ended up getting the Dragon Zord and he got this like Ooh. special knife and then he became the White Ranger. He had like a ponytail. He was fine. He was like I the very first no, he was very good looking. Kiss yeah. I remember on screen was him and the Pink Ranger Kelly and like they had oh. this whole love story arc and I filmed it like filmed it. I videotaped it on our VCR and I would just like wear that tape out and watch it over and over. <laughs> I was like, someday I'll have a boy love me as much as Tommy loves Kelly. That's the oh. white Ranger and the Pink Ranger. So it was, you know, it's one of those where he was big on a lot of our hearts because we grew up mm-hmm. with them and he was like our hero. He was like the hero of the team and like the leader and stuff. So very heartbreaking overall. But Kim, I'm glad you were safe. I'm glad. He was safe that day. Nobody got hurt that day. And hopefully that perpetrator is getting the help he needed because yeah, that is extreme. 
It's also another example of stalking. Yeah. I mean, he had tried to stab him 15 years earlier. So mm-hmm. this man clearly had a um, obsession of some sort with him that uh, even spanned 15 years. So who knows mm-hmm. what happened over those 15 years before it got to that point again. Right. You're like, man, that guy tried to stab me 15 years ago. I wonder whatever happened to him and how mm-hmm. horrifying that he still thinks about you. And to the point that he wrote a reminder in his phone to kill you today. Yeah. That's eerie. It is very, very eerie. Sinister Hood will be right back. Well, this next one is from Jenna, and it is called Stranger Working Beside You. Hello, lovely ladies. I love listening to you and look forward to every episode, especially for Key Fridays. I've heard several listeners tell how they knew or worked with murderers or other monsters. What a strange feeling that must be to find out you knew someone was capable of such horror. While I have never worked with any monsters that I know of, I have worked with a victim and survivor. I will call her Debbie for privacy's sake. I work as a manager at a large department store. Every year we hire seasonal help for Christmas, and Debbie was one of our seasonal hires. Debbie was very quiet and shy. She was a very petite woman, probably in her mid to late 40s, with her hair always up in a neat bun. She wore only two homemade dresses, one in deep teal and one in burgundy. She would dress them up sometimes with a homemade black vest. Every day at break, she sat in the break room with her earbuds in. One of our coworkers asked her one day what she was listening to, and she responded, The Bible. She was a good worker. We put her in charge of the toy department, and she kept it nice and tidy. One evening, I was home and decided to watch a documentary on Warren Jeffs. I couldn't believe my eyes when on my screen I saw Debbie's face staring back at me. She was one of his wives. It was very hard for me to imagine what horrors this sweet woman was forced to endure. She kept to herself and didn't socialize with anyone at work just kept her head down and worked away. I felt awful for her when our seasonal help ended for the year. She got quite upset and thought she hadn't worked hard enough to be kept on. Her work certainly wasn't the reason. We just didn't need as many workers after Christmas. Every time I hear Warren Jeff's name now, I can't help but think of her. I hope she is doing well and has healed some in the years she's been free of him. I've attached a photo of her with Warren and some of the other wives though please don't share. She is the one on the far left. It just goes to show you never know what the people in your day-to-day lives have lived through and experienced. That is going to be a jaw-dropping moment when you turn on a docuseries Mm. at home and your colleague is one of the victims of a heinous perpetrator like Warren Jeffs. Oh, if I had, and if I, I have a list of people, (laughs) you know, that I, if I was ever alone in a room, uh, all bets are off. It's going to be cage match style. One of us is leaving Warren Jeffs and it ain't going to be you. He's, he's, he's in the top five. He is in the top five. He is a monster and we won't share this picture, Mm -mm. but this is just some of the wives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, eight, 17, 18 in this picture. Something like that. Yeah. Just all in a row with him towering over them. It's, Mm -hmm. oh God, he makes my stomach just fall out of my asshole. He's so gross. I hate him. I fucking Mm. hate his face. I hate him so much. Every part about him, I hate him so much. And he deserves uh, to be punished for one million years for all the things Mm -hmm. he's done. Just the stealing of, you know, entire lives of these women. And And um, children. And so many children. I'm saying they start as children. He he steals their entire lives from, Mm -hmm. you know, from beginning to end, plus then the kids they have. So that's, and that's so sad. I would, and, you know, to correlate it to what she had been through, if you are one of a million wives, it's like, well, you're not as good as Barbara, Debbie. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should try harder. So it's something normal like, oh, it's a seasonal position. It's like, well, like, what could I have done? Like that, mm-hmm. how it destroys your self-worth and it makes you compare yourself and it makes you question yourself of like those long lasting impacts. Of, like she's free of him. But you're still grappling with the what he did, not just the mental the physically stress. what he did, but yeah, mm-hmm. the mental stress and then just like how it – your brain evolved from yeah. being in that environment and having to unlearn all that stuff. That's so hard, but 
Um, you know, I'm glad she got out of it and, you know, working a job and hopefully she moved on somewhere else where she can, you know, do something where you're even something simple, like keeping the toy department tidy, where it's her work and she can take pride in her work right. and be independent. Yes. And hopefully the more she does jobs like that and is exposed to things outside of that oppressive bubble she was living in and hopefully with therapy that it's not your first reaction isn't, Oh, well, this is my fault. I must mm -hmm. not have done a good enough job. It's just, Oh yeah, it's seasonal. Okay. But when you've been brainwashed to think that, you know, I mean, it's very hard to undo all that damage. So yeah, it's um, I'm glad that Jenna, you were able to um, give her a nice place just to probably have some, some respite and at least some normalcy and you sound like a really thoughtful and kind boss. So I'm glad that she had you as her manager. For sure. Agreed. This next one is from Becca. And the subject line is the stranger at church. Hi, ladies. Thanks for everything you do and for the platform you've created for us to all come together and heal. This is my story about the stranger I encountered in a time I wholeheartedly believe I narrowly escaped something terrible. I've always been a big believer in trusting my gut. I think it started when I was young. One night, I remember watching the news on TV with my parents. They were covering a story of a man's home that randomly blew up, and the man had made it out just in time. When they interviewed the man, I distinctly remember him saying, Something inside me just told me to get out. I can't explain it. Ever since then, I've always listened to my instincts. And I've always had strong gut instincts but never quite as strong as when the strange man sat next to me at church. When I was 22 years old, I moved across the country to Los Angeles. I didn't know anyone there. I had made a few friends, but none that wanted to go to church with me. No problem, I thought. I'll go on my own. I lived not too long of a bus ride outside of downtown LA. I had read online that a church met in one of the theaters down there, so I thought I'd give it a try. One Sunday, I got to the theater hosting the church service a few minutes early and found a seat separated from anyone else. Not totally alone, but not directly next to anyone. It was a big theater, and there was plenty of space to spread out, which is why it was strange when a man, probably around 30 years old, came and sat in the seat right next to me. He was tall and skinny, and he was dressed in clothes that weren't quite right for church. Something about him felt immediately off. Not wanting to be rude, I stayed in my seat, mumbled a polite hello, and tried to ignore him. Soon, the music started playing, and we all stood up to sing along to the music. For anyone who has ever been to church, this is a well-known part of the morning. But even if you hadn't been before, it was easy to read the room and note this was not social time. But as I was singing, I noticed this man kept looking over at me. I must have given him a look after a few minutes because he bent down and whispered to me, It's okay. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. This was very unsettling. But again, not trying to be rude, I just gave a polite smile and looked away. My guard was on high alert, and my instincts were already telling me something was wrong. For reference, I'm a small person, petite and thin, and was in my early 20s. I was fit but could easily have been overtaken by someone larger than me, which most people were. I noticed he kept looking over at me, and I was getting more and more uncomfortable. Then he started looking to the back of the theater, very purposefully, like he was looking at someone in particular. He'd look at me, and then he'd look to the back of the theater, the same spot every time. This happened a few times before I couldn't ignore my gut anymore. Get out, it was shouting at me. Run! So I did. I've never felt such a sense of urgency to get away from anywhere or anyone before. I walked as fast as I could outside the theater, out of the lobby, and out onto the street. There was a farmer's market that met outside of the theater every Sunday, so thankfully there were many people there. I ran into the bookstore next door and up to its second floor window. I can't tell you how long I stood there in that window, looking down at the street, looking to see if he followed me. I never saw him again. I guess this story is anticlimactic, but it was truly one of the most terrifying mornings of my life. I've never had a gut reaction so strong, and I just know it was my instincts protecting me. 
It's been eight years, and I still can't shake the feeling I narrowly escaped something terrible. The way he looked at me, the way he told me it was going to be okay, the way he was clearly communicating with someone else, it was all wrong. I don't tell this story to many people, afraid that it makes me sound dramatic, but it's taught me an important lesson. When your instincts are telling you something is wrong, listen. Don't wait as long as I did. Being polite is never worth its consequences. I agree. If yeah. you're, I mean, and we're, it's so ingrained in us, especially women, to, well, don't make a fuss. Don't Just be don't rude. cause a scene. Well, and especially in church, I mean, that's mm-hmm. kind of like nobody wants to cause a scene. This guy obviously wasn't, uh, on the same page he he didn't <laughs> understand the how, how it works there regardless of if he was just trying to be creepy if he had some nefarious thing planned if he was having a mental health episode if your gut is telling you get out listen i mean wh- yeah. what's th- what's it going to hurt to you know i mean best case you avoid something awful worst case you uh hurt some guy's feelings you're ever going to see again who cares about that yeah plus you get to go to a bookstore which is a two-star bookstore is a score that's a huge score no i agree especially i think a lot of times predators choose situations wherein it would be awkward for you to make a scene Mm -hmm. yell but like whether it's on a train or you know a crowd not a crowded area but like something like this where everyone's singing so you should be singing and if you're yelling maybe they won't hear you just things like that not to be overly paranoid but it when someone is aberrantly behaving in a way that's like this makes my stomach sick just leave that's cool you Mm -hmm. did the right thing and don't feel bad about how long it took you to leave because you got out and that's all that's important but i think we got a sixth sense like we're i'm not talking Mm -hmm. about Haley joel osmond but it's like i see weird people (laughs) like i told y'all like whenever i'm at uh, at a place and i'm like that person is behaving aberrantly it doesn't mean i'm gonna like call them out or freak out or yell but i tend to clock things like that Mm -hmm. and i think especially we know when we're the one that it's happening to of like oh I got that spidey sense. Mm-hmm. Well, in the studies that show when someone is going to commit a nefarious act, certain pheromones and whatnot are released and subconsciously or consciously, like our body clocks that. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's also science. It's not just like woo woo mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, there's a reason that um, you're, you got those feelings. So don't ignore them. Yeah, we do have that sixth sense. It's like, I smell what you're cooking and I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> I don't like, like it, it one bit. Especially not a whisper of like, don't worry. Like, bitch, I wasn't worried until you started whispering yeah. to me. You go no, on. don't I hate do it. that. No, thank you. Well, I, uh, I, like I said, don't, uh, don't beat yourself up, Becca. You left when you left and you made it out of there and we can all take one out of the playbook. Mm-hmm. Sinisterhood, we'll be right back. Well, speaking of playbooks, this next one is from Leah, and the subject line is Badass Grandma Jane Talks Down a Gunman. Dear Christy and Heather, I've been a longtime listener, but not as long as my wife, Paige. She got hooked on episode three, and I've wanted to tell you two about my Grandma Jane for a long time now. My name is Leah, she, her, and I'm here to tell a story about my badass grandma, Jane. I thought that you Sinisterhood gals would provide a good venue to send this story since the podcast celebrates feminism, survivors, and women who are tough as nails and yet remain compassionate in the face of unprecedented cruelty. Grandma Jane fits all these categories. Grandma Jane grew up in the middle of nowhere as a hardworking farm girl. She went to school in a one-room schoolhouse and later moved off the farm so she could rent a room that was in a town that had a high school. She worked after school as a switchboard operator so she could rent the apartment and attend high school. She graduated from school and eventually went to college to become a nurse. This story takes place in 1948, when she was a junior in high school. She met my grandfather in their high school class, and they began to date or go steady. One evening, he drove her up to a place called Tucker Drive for a date. Now, if you were 16 in the 1940s in Hanover, New Hampshire— Tucker Drive was the place to go if you wanted to go necking with your boyfriend, as Grandma Jane called it. They were in the back seat of the car making out when a man knocked on the back window of the car. They looked over and saw that he was pointing a gun right at them. 
this man began yelling at the pair to give him all their money. Apparently, my grandfather said something of the equivalent of, No way, man! Fuck you! Enraged by my grandfather's reply, the man reached inside the car and hit him over the head with the butt of the gun. He fell over instantly, knocked unconscious by the blow. While my grandfather was literally bleeding out into Grandma Jane's lap, my badass grandma proceeded to talk the gunman down. Turns out, she actually knew him from work. Remember how she had to work after school to pay rent as a high schooler? She actually knew this man as the janitor of the hospital where she worked as a switchboard operator. She was able to talk him down by showing him compassion. First, she asked, Are you feeling well, Norman? He looked confused, but she continued talking with a gentle and nurturing tone. She leaned over my grandfather's unconscious, bleeding body and put her hand on Norman's forehead, the gun still in his hand. She asked, Do you have a fever? A headache? I don't think you're well. He mumbled in agreement. She said, I'd like to help you. Could you empty the revolver of bullets so I can talk to you? He did, and the bullets fell to the ground, providing evidence for her to show the cops later. She continued calmly, You know, I think he probably has a headache too, and he isn't feeling too well either, she said, pointing at, I'll say it again, my grandfather who was bleeding out in her lap. Then she asked, Do you have a car? Can you get home safely, Norman? He replied that he did, and then he asked her the same thing, if she could get home safely. She reacted to this gunman with compassion, and he reciprocated. Then he sort of wandered off calmly to his car and drove off. Grandma Jane had never driven a car before this day, but she had driven the tractor back at the farm. She climbed into the front seat and drove my grandfather to the hospital where she and Norman worked, saying Hail Marys the whole way. The way she tells it, she made sure to add extra emphasis to the now and at the hour of our death, amen, part. She made it to the hospital where she yelled for help, and my grandfather was rushed into emergency surgery. He had a metal plate drilled into his fractured skull. Grandma Jane told the police her story, brought them up to Tucker Drive where the bullets were still scattered on the ground, and later Norman was brought to justice. Grandma Jane called her mother to tell her of the traumatic events that had transpired. Her reply? Janie, did you say you were up on Tucker Drive? What the hell were you doing up there with that boy? Ha! But my grandparents went on to marry and have five daughters, one of whom is my mother. If it weren't for Grandma Jane's quick thinking that night, I might not be here today. My grandmother is the strongest person I know, and she's kept both her spirit of endurance and her characteristic love and compassion her whole life. I am so lucky to have her in my life as a mentor and progenitor, and this story is a testament to her character. While it isn't always possible, this story is one example of how compassion actually worked in diffusing a crisis, and I think that's so beautiful. Thanks for all you do, and please do come back to San Francisco. We enjoyed your full moon energy tour so much. Leah. Grandma Jane. Fuck yeah, dude. You know how to handle uh, stress. That's <laughs> right? like the most stressful situation you can be in. And she came in clutch. But being able to maintain being cool, calm, and collected, mm -hmm. that's uh, – and the fact that she knew him, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that worked to her advantage for sure. Maybe feeling more uh, – confident in your abilities to talk to him had it had it been a stranger but man that is uh quite a story and your grandfather quite literally owes your grandmother his life <laughs> that's true i mean she saved his life and uh, you have calamity jane this is compassionate jane she's like <laughs> i think it really does sort of throw um the perpetrators like it throws them off their game, which is like a John Mulaney bit from like a million years ago. But I think, you know, having him be like, give me all your money ah, and hitting and yelling and being like, hello, Norman, how are you? It's like, what? She knows me. What? She's asking me questions. So I'm glad it worked out in that situation. And uh, he was eventually, you know, found and arrested. I love that. Gr Grandma Jane's mom is like, you were up there necking at Tucker yeah. Drive? What are That's, you doing? Uh, <laughs> that was the sign of the times. Uh, <laughs> more concerned with your young daughter's <laughs> reputation being tarnished and the fact that she had a man bleeding out in her lap, <laughs> saved his life. 
talked her way out of getting shot herself, went back, showed the cops, the here's proof, and then for the first time ever (laughs) successfully drove them to the hospital where surgery was performed. But God forbid you be up there necking. (laughs) I mean, I guess the mom is like, well, if you hadn't been up there in the first place, you wouldn't have had all that. It's like, well, let's just not discount the fact that I'm actually (laughs) kind of a hero. Do we want to, we don't want to address that at all. And I might have some like trauma. That was probably (laughs) pretty traumatic to see somebody get smacked over the head with the butt of a gun and then bleed out unconsciously in your lap that because it's not just like oh he bonked him and gave him an old goose egg the fact that you had to have a metal plate drilled in your skull is a severe head injury and not panicking in that moment it sounds like grandma jane was destined to be a nurse that this all gives nurse Mm. vibes is having an unpredictable violent person behaving in a way and then just being like we're not doing that right now let's calm down I think you're not doing well. You need to go get back in your car. I'm like, she was a, she was a born nurse. I mm-hmm. love it. Uh, and we would love to come back to San Francisco oh, yeah. uh, sometime soon. We had such a great time doing full moon energy there. So Absolutely. thank you all for coming. And, uh, and, and shout out to Paige, to Leah's wife, Paige, for listening from way back Dang, in the early yeah. days. Oh, thank gee. you. Thank y'all for you sticking those, with us. Uh, rough episodes those <laughs> the first, and, you, and you stuck around so <laughs> that is uh sincerely appreciated yeah I'm, uh, an impressive testament to your tenacity truly mm-hmm. thank you thank you both so much sinisterhood we'll be right back well this final one is from kitty and the subject line is arkansas wear panther hello Let's insert the gushing right about here. I love y'all and all the things that come along with that. Someday I'll make it to a live show. I have a lot of stories. I grew up in and out of foster care and in between stints with CPS. My biological mother struggled with addiction and had severe untreated mental illness. We squatted, lived in cars, abandoned places, and campsites. There were always bizarre things happening and sometimes supernatural. I can send more if you'd like but some have some sensitive topics. All that to say that even by the time I had this encounter, I had seen a lot of weirdness. I was 14 years old in 2002 and living with the foster family in the rural Ozark Mountains in Arkansas when one of my older foster siblings, let's call her Anne, age 17, decided that she was going into big sister mode and take us all to the movies. All of us included Monica, 12, Nicole, 14, Renee, eight, and myself. Now, driving into town took about 40 minutes and took us through mountains and woodlands, bra- through mountains and woodland bracketed roads with no lines and only a vague sense of a speed limit. Deer and bears and every little woodland creature in between inhabit these hills and mountains and gave absolutely zero fucks about crossing roads. We were pretty used to this and watching the side of the road for critters. I don't remember what we saw, just teasing my foster sisters and having fun. It was a regular sister night, until we were driving home. We were nearly home, all deer and armadillos successfully avoided, nothing but gravel and early aughts pop music filling the cabin of Anne's little Mercury. Suddenly, Monica, who was in the front seat, put her hand on her mouth and pointed forward through the windshield. What's that, Anne? Oh my god. She sat forward. What is that? Anne leaned over the steering wheel as she slowed to a stop and asked, Is that a bear? I leaned forward as little Renee leaned between the front seats. Nicole was shaking her head. Quick note, Renee and Nicole are my foster parents' natural daughters. They had lived up in these mountains their entire lives. They knew all the animals that roam these hills. No, Renee said, that's not a bear. Nicole just shook her head. I don't know what that is. Anne turned off the radio and I squinted as I watched through the windshield, unable to find my words. It looked like a giant cat-slash-dog hybrid. It was black. The fur was glossy. Its eyes refracted green in the headlights. Is it a panther? I asked quietly. No, Nicole said. It's too big. Anne inched the car closer, and Monica smacked at her. Don't! Don't! I'm just trying to see, Anne snapped back as she snapped at Monica's hands. It's moving! Renee, being eight and small, had wiggled into the space between them and was pointing at the creature. The car went silent, 
a trick for four teenage girls and a third grader. But the silence fell, and the creature moved. It stood. It stood on two legs. This thing, black fur, feline-adjacent face, and a fucking tail, unfurled itself from the side of the road, and all we could do was sit there in silence and watch. We watched it walk in big, lurching steps across the pavement in absolute silence. We drove home in silence. We never talked about it again. We never told our foster parents until Thanksgiving 2023. See, I ended up being adopted by this family, and now I'm a member of the Arkansas Hill Folk. In spirit, I live in a city now. And this last Thanksgiving, as my mom was telling us about more UFOs, yes, there are an absolute ton of UFOs up here, I decided to tell her about the Were Panther. And get this, one of my much older cousins saw it too. She saw it from a distance out on the four-wheeler doing cattle one morning in the 90s. She said, it was just one of those things. Two of my sisters remember this, and two of them don't. My mom believes me, but what do you all think? I think you saw a oh. goddamn were panther. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> Whatever it was sounds horrifying because not the two legs is what does it for me. Yeah, bipedal on a creature that was once on all fours is disturbing. I'm trying to think of what woodland creature would walk across the street on two legs. And uh, yeah. I haven't come up with one yet. A bear... Sometimes does, but usually I don't think that's how it would cross a road. It's more if it's like trying to get something out of a tree or, or you know, threaten yeah. somebody. Or, like yeah, a like, sickly bear was what I was thinking. But a feline face doesn't track with a bear. Yeah, especially if you are from kind of that mountain area and you're familiar with what a bear looks like. What all – it's something – it's this up the Ozark Mountains are sort of on the north part of Arkansas, which you're starting getting close to Missouri, close to Mark Twain National Forest, kind of central United States area, qu adjacent to Appalachia. There are things, things lurk within the forest. <laughs> mm, something's <laughs> going on. They lurk within. Yeah, I think uh, between the, a ton of UFOs and <laughs> Were Panther, I, uh, I think you saw Were Panther. Maybe so. I think that you did see something and mm -hmm. your other two sisters just don't remember it. But isn't that funny that you can mm -hmm. have four, five people in a car and half of you remember it and half of you don't? <laughs> yeah, That's, two of you like. Welcome to my childhood. My brothers will be <laughs> like, remember that time that we all went on this family trip to such and such? I'm like, no, I literally have no memory of that whatsoever. You're like, did you guys have fun? Because <laughs> did I did I seem like I was did having I, fun? Did I? Can you show me some pictures and maybe it'll trigger something? Maybe you but, were in a different timeline. <laughs> you oh, switched dang, timelines. Maybe that could be it. I've always thought it was anxiety and depression, but maybe I was just in <laughs> no. I think you were you were shifting timelines. It has nothing to do with reality. It was your changing reality. Oh. Uh, and it and in this case, you know, Kitty was in the. The Wear Panther timeline, which is appropriate, and then yes. the other sisters were not, and that's that's their loss. Honestly, I'm sad for them. But and then listen the other one that's like it's just one of those things. I'm out here trying to do my cattle. I don't have time to stop right. and deal with the Wear yeah, Panther have, right now. You'd be like, I saw a Wear Panther, and your mom'd be like, Oh yeah, your cousin's seen a Wear Panther. Give him a call. Give her a call, yeah. and she's like, Oh yeah, I've seen a Wear Panther when I was on a four wheeler. It was crazy. <laughs> anyway. It's fucked up shit in the woods. Bye. <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> That's how we have to deal with it. If you're out, if you're hill folk, my other family is Tennessee hill folk, so we're kind of cousins there. But, you know, the things that you see out there, where are you going to go? Well, I'm going to leave town. It's like, no, you have your family farm is there. You can't just mm -hmm. like pick up and leave. So when you encounter wild shit like these cryptids or whatever, you're just like, well, you don't bother them and they won't bother you. <laughs> Like we say, this Leave world is not meant for us. So no, we are merely here world. and the Were Panthers can do whatever they like. And we just go on about our business. Yeah, the, it's a Were Panther world and we're all just living in it. But <laughs> to that extent, if you're listening, uh, not Kitty, but anybody or her, or her cousin, but if anybody else is listening and had spent some time in Arkansas and you've encountered a Were Panther, please write in so Kitty knows she's not alone and that this, and if you know what it is, please let us know. We got to do some cryptid digging of what, what cryptids lurk over there. Potentially stupid question. Do Panthers. Are those things that live in Arkansas regular uh, panthers? 
He I might thought have... panthers were jungle cats. Let me but wait. I also, there's probably a lot of people right now that are like, no, you idiot. They live in Arkansas and Missouri and all over the place. Hopefully it wasn't quite as harsh as I just made it out to be. Well, hang on a second. It's, well, you're not harsh, but this is important information to when I just Googled, do panthers live in Arkansas? This is from 2009. Wildlife officers respond to mountain lion sightings as big cats are caught on camera in Arkansas. And a highlighted portion of this article says, quote, state wildlife officers say wild mountain lions, cougars, or panthers don't exist in the natural state. It is our position that they're here because they are most likely re- released or escaped cats. Oh. So some guy on his mountain camera saw, they said that they did have wild mountain lions roaming freely in Arkansas, but that the population was wiped out in the early 1920s when Arkansas was settled. There's been no evidence of the Florida panther in Arkansas since the 1920s, and no evidence of a wild mountain lion in Arkansas since 1975. This is vital information to to track in the wear wow. panther. So yeah, and if you go, was there are there big cats in Arkansas? And someone said, no, you idiot. We're not. I'm not trying to track <laughs> every animal in every state. I can barely keep hold of the cryptids we have in the animals. No. I'm more just worried about the coyotes that walk next to my house all the time eating much. Did I tell you I saw a coyote <laughs> run in front of my car the other night on no. the way to your house? Yeah, it was over by the lake. Oh shit! Just yeah, they're out a, and about. They Saw. are the coyotes are everywhere. Well, that makes it even weirder though. If unless it was, and sadly, I think this is what happens a lot of times: is people get illegal pets, and then right. they realize I'm not equipped for this, and so they release them into the wild, and then all sorts of mayhem happens. So. Then they breed with a werewolf, and you have a werepanther. Exactly. (laughs) This was Joe Exotic's pet, and he let out a werewolf. Oh, God. He fucked a werewolf, and now it's this. If you don't have big cats there naturally, Mm -hmm. then, yeah, the the feline face, that makes it even creepier. Yeah, and that's what – it sounds like that the state wildlife officers, when this these spottings happened back in 2009, were like – it's most likely a wild, like a, a wild pet or something that somebody, an exotic pet that somebody Sickly. let loose, which is sad. But it does say, um, <gasps> wait, hold on. Interesting. Someone said uh, that they found a. This person says I saw a black panther in Arkansas in Jacksonville on my black my back porch. And uh, people on Reddit. So other people apparently have seen a big, like if a big giant, it didn't say they were walking on two feet, but they did have pictures of what looks like a little cat footprint that they claim Mm. it left a footprint. Well, so they're out there. And, you know, I mean, animals can go wherever they want pretty much. So even if they're not from there, they could migrate there. And why are they doing that? That's probably a question that only them and the aliens know, and we're just waiting around, seeing what move the <laughs> Were Panther makes next, so we can try to plan our lives, yeah, plan so our I'm, escape. It, it is not you're not alone, Kitty. They said this person said the Wildlife Commission says that there are no panthers in Arkansas, but I'll tell you what: anybody in the remote areas of the Bear Hollow community will tell you otherwise. I grew up there. We've seen one. We've heard one. Many of our neighbors did too. Um, there are lots of wolves l- lurking around, but we know the difference between a panther and a wolf. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> but, so you're not alone, Kitty. Anybody that's seen the Arkansas were panther, right in. It sounds like um, the locals probably know a lot more than law enforcement. Who's gonna? Who are you gonna believe? The locals or law enforcement? Or like, yeah, you locals. know, if you're if you're a gaming commissioner and you're like are in charge of the whole state, you're not out there on your back porch late at night seeing those green eyes. Or maybe you don't you. want people to know the truth, so you're trying to keep it d- on down low because you don't want everyone to be scared. But the locals and Kitty are out here to tell you the truth. Anytime you espouse a really fringe conspiracy like that, my heart grows. And I'm like, fuck yeah, maybe it was that. They were, <laughs> the government was trying to cover it up. You're right, Christy. You're right. <laughs> I, uh, is the thinking the government's trying to cover stuff up fringe? I thought Not that was all. the Not norm all. these days. <laughs> I thought that was well known these days that they lie to you all the time about everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, let us know if you, uh, have reported a Panther sighting and you were denied by the gaming commissioner. <laughs> 
<laughs> or not may be mean, entitled to compensation. <laughs> yeah. We will call. tell your story at the very least. So you feel heard and seen. You're recognized. We recognize you. Thanks for writing that in Kitty. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much, Kitty. And thank you to everyone else for sending in your Freaky Friday stories. If you have an odd but true story, maybe you've encountered Bigfoot, you've seen a UFO, you had a brush with true crime, or you felt the presence of an otherworldly being, send them in at SinisterHood.com slash Freaky Friday. We got some new deals going on right now, don't we, Heather? Yeah, and we have the Join for Free is where once a month you're going to get a throwback Thursday, the first Thursday of every month, which the one for February is out now. But in addition to just joining for free, we also have a free trial where you can join at any Patreon level. And for a whole week, you get every single perk that is involved in that level. And you just can cancel any time before the trial is over without getting charged. Or if you want to go ahead and uh, take the leap this leap year, go Ooh. ahead and do an annual membership because for the month of February, annual members ships are 16 percent off which is like getting two months free so you pretty much would get like a week free with your trial and then when you finally decide to get charged just adjust it make sure you do that annual membership so you get the two months free as well so so two months us. plus a week free yeah yeah it's uh february is the time it's leap year it's baby the it's the one it's the one month we're doing the we're deal going wild it's leap year baby <laughs> but it's leap year but we told you up top about docuary christy why should everyone join to join docuary well, it's like a book club, but for documentaries, we curate a list of films, we watch them before the stream, and then every Friday at 2 p.m. Central, we go live on Crowdcast, where you can chime in via the chat, we'll discuss it. If you haven't watched it, that's cool too. Just know there'll be spoilers, but we invite you to watch them beforehand so we can all engage in a discussion together, and they're always very enlightening and thought provoking. I love documentaries. That's kind of my thing. I don't read a whole lot, <laughs> but I love it's what, it's documentaries. Like a book club. <laughs> but documentaries. <laughs> it's, it's, exactly. So um, this year I have chosen the past four Academy Award winners. So we have got this first Friday coming up is American Factory, which is available on Netflix. So you can go to the pinned post on Patreon for all of the links for all four and go ahead and register. And if you're like, I kind of want to see what this is about, this is the time for the free trial where you can check it out. Yeah, once you get in there, just search Docuary. And uh, there's also a link in our bio, our Instagram bio and all that. Not only that, when you join, you get ad-free episodes, monthly live stream Q&As, quarterly bonus content live streams. We just had our most recent one. You can catch me doing a uh, lip sync oh, rendition God. of Bill O'Reilly's famous <laughs> rant while Christy laughs, <laughs> as well also, as many others. <laughs> One of the most disturbing videos I've seen. In a while. I'm really sorry, you guys. I need to do make a public. I need to make a public <laughs> apology for that last video on the stream last night. It was fucked up. I'm sorry. We were told to finish hard, and that's <laughs> what finish strong, and that's what happens when you tell we went, us to finish strong. <laughs> we went too strong, but you also get weekly audio bonus content like True Crime headlines, Judge Christie, Dear Sinister, Am I the Asshole, all kinds of different things. Monthly mini sods. We've got some cool ones coming up about uh, some of the world's toughest prisons, as well as a secret conspiracy kind of near the Ozarks where the Were Panther is but it's mm -hmm. an Illuminati conspiracy it's a little underground and you get merch discounts uh, 10 or 20% off depending on the tier plus just the best listeners in the whole entire internet we love you guys so much who do support us on Patreon and we thank you so very much it is really such an inclusive and supportive community and we're not just saying that because we're biased like all of the people in the community say that so yes. on our exclusive patreon facebook group everyone it's just it's so just like heartwarming to pop in and it's like hey i can't tell anybody yet this because nobody knows but i wanted to tell all of y'all and then it's like really big like life-changing news or something mm -hmm. and or like advice for something mm -hmm. that you don't know if anybody in your your circle has it's like hey i'm going through this is anybody else going through it and there'll be like 80 comments of like mm -hmm. i got you yes here's some resources it's just like it warms the, the cockles of our hearts <laughs> truly and also the live streams are fun and funnier because of you all in the oh, chat 100%. that's like what makes them good so so if uh you want to join that fun join between february 29th to get the most annual savings the deal ends on february 29th perks vary by tier if you have any questions on that uh jump on patreon feel free to dm us over there that is uh where it's easiest to chat with us
Absolutely. And head over to SinisterHood.com and click shop on the top banner to check out Sinisterhood merch like t-shirts, mugs, totes, stickers, and even clothes for your kiddos. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon member, to use that discount code and get your deal. While you're on our website, you can also review the show. We always appreciate a five-star review. Mm -hmm. Follow us on socials and check out the episode description. You'll also find fun things like topic-based playlists. If you have people in your life that... They're maybe they're not into true crime. They're just into paranormal or they're not into paranormal, just true crime. We have curated playlists that run the gamut of all very specific shows, which are great ways to share things with new listeners or even just yourself. You're like, you know what? Today I'm just in a cryptid kind of mood. I just want to <laughs> hear all about cryptids. We yeah. got you. We got you. Check out those playlists. There are also when we have live shows, which we will be going back on tour in the next few months. We'll have more information on that soon. But our live show tickets will be available on our website. And another perk for patrons is you get first dibs on tickets, including VIP tickets when they do go on sale. Yeah, don't miss those. You can follow us on Instagram and threads at Sinisterhood Pod. Like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. Check out video versions of our weekly episodes on YouTube, which drop ad-free and early on Patreon. And head over to our TikTok for fun little clips from the show, like Fuck, Mary Kill, Supernatural Cats, which people got a <laughs> lot of hot takes on that. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's but good. also on YouTube, it's not just our episodes. It's no. all of our Freaky Friday interviews we've done. There's other stuff on there, like stuff that does make it to our TikTok and everything. So go subscribe over there too. And um, also go check out the hot dudes from Supernatural and tell us who you would FMK. <laughs> Please do. And if you want to have a custom video shout out from us, check us out on Cameo. We can say happy birthday, happy Valentine's, happy Galentine's, happy anniversary, celebrating a new job promotion, needing a pep talk because things aren't going well. We love to do them on Cameo and we would love to incorporate any of our whimsical friends like our Popple or McGruff the Crime Dog or a Corn Skull. Whatever you want on Cameo, let us know at Cameo.com and search Sinisterhood. Chrissy, where are you at on the World Wide Web? I am on Instagram and threads at Christy M. Wallace and TikTok at Christy or GTFO. Heather? I'm on that internet at Heather versus the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinister.